Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Do you feel hot pressure on your chest, heartburn, an acidic taste that comes back up your throat into your mouth? If you have these symptoms frequently, you might have what's called GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Franklin Tsai. He's a gastroenterologist with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group in La Jolla, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Susan. Um, how common is GERD? It's very common. Um, it affects about 10 to 20 percent of the U.S. population. And what area is most affected? It's mostly affected in the um, esophagus area, which you know, most people feel in the chest. And what are the symptoms? Uh, the typical symptoms uh, would be uh, heartburn, which is a sensation of burning in the chest area, um, or regurgitation, the feeling of food coming up into the chest. Um, but some other less typical symptoms that also might be related to GERD include uh, chest pain, having a sour taste or a lump in the throat, um, feeling of nausea, coughing, hoarseness of the voice, uh, or even trouble swallowing. And so who's most at risk for GERD? Uh, some of the risk factors uh, that tend to cause GERD include um, obesity um, because of the increased pressure on the stomach. In the same way, pregnancy is a risk factor. Um, other conditions that might increase the risk are diabetes, asthma, uh, people with connective uh, tissue disorders. And so what triggers an episode and how long do these episodes last? Uh, typically, um, the triggers include uh, uh, food in particular, um, uh, spicy foods, fatty foods, uh, chocolate, citrus fruits, tomatoes, uh, coffee and alcohol are also triggers. Uh, eating too close to bedtime or overeating can be triggers as well. Um, and also other triggers include uh, smoking and, um, and the, the episodes can last from minutes to hours. And what about a hiatal hernia? What is that and how does it trigger an episode of GERD? Uh, yes, uh, a hiatal hernia is very common. It's uh, when part of the stomach uh, is located higher up, perhaps by uh, an inch or two, um, and that can cause a weakness of the lower esophagus valve that protects the esophagus from acid reflux. Um, so people with a hiatal hernia have a tendency uh, to have more acid reflux. So how do you treat GERD? Uh, so we typically would advise patients with GERD to uh, avoid the acid forming foods, um, also avoid eating uh, two to three hours before bedtime. Uh, we also encourage weight loss. Um, uh, losing 10 pounds of weight will take a lot of pressure off of the stomach. Um, and also um, there are acid medications um, that are available and commonly used, including the over-the-counter uh, antacids, um, uh, or there are prescription um, pr medications that your physician can provide for you that are stronger. And what about surgery? What does that involve? Yep, um, so for patients who have more severe acid reflux that's not responding to medical management, diet changes, um, there are an uh, increasing number of options, uh, including um, outpatient surgery to uh, tighten the valve or repair hiatal hernia. Um, those typically are, um, uh, allow uh, patients to return to normal activities in a few days, uh, although they may be on a soft diet for a few weeks. Um, and there's newer surgeries and procedures that allow um, uh, repair of the, the esophagus valve, including uh, a, a, a laparoscopic procedure that put, place a ring of magnets in the lower esophagus, um, and also one that can be done by a scope procedure as opposed to surgery where the um, GI physician can uh, place uh, staples to tighten the valve uh, without doing an actual operation. So once you get GERD, is this a chronic condition? It can be a chronic condition, um, but the good news is that uh, oftentimes with diet and lifestyle modifications, uh, I know it's not easy to give up that chocolate or, or the alcohol, but um, oftentimes by making some diet changes, avoiding late night meals, um, you can't control the acid reflux. Um, but for, for some people who do have um, a hiatal hernia or other conditions that may predispose them to the acid reflux, um, it may be more difficult to control without uh, medical management. So if left untreated though, what can happen? With uh, more severe GERD, um, there can be some complications such as um, acid damage or inflammation of the esophagus, 
Uh, sometimes people can get scar tissue in the esophagus that might make it more difficult to eat. And it can even cause precancerous changes in the esophagus, um, such as Barrett's esophagus, that could increase one's risk of esophagus cancer. So when should you go see a doctor to get this checked out and treated? So if you have uh, severe or persistent symptoms that's not responding to antacids or diet changes, um, if these are new atypical symptoms um, after the age of uh, 50, um, or if you have any um, uh, worrisome symptoms such as uh, vomiting, bleeding, black tarry stools, uh, anemia, or unexpected weight loss, sensation of food getting stuck when you swallow, um, those would all be um, concerns that you should see your doctor for. Any final thoughts, doctor? GERD is very common. It affects uh, many, many people, um, but uh, not everything um, that presents with discomfort in the chest is GERD. So um, if you do have severe or atypical symptoms, um, please make sure to discuss with or follow up with your physician or your uh, gastroenterologist uh, to evaluate for any uh, other, other conditions or any complications that need to be treated. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. If you want more information on GERD, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.